Engage. We are live streaming on Sunday, May 10th, 2020. Today, we're going to talk about Chapter 21 of the Gospel According to Spiritism. There will be false prophets. What does this mean, according to Alan Kardec, and my commentary? So in Chapter 21, let's get right into it. There will be false Christ and false prophets. That's the title of the, of the uh, chapter. And this is what uh, Alan Kardec starts the chapter off with. It says Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 20. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Then he also said about chapter 24, verse 4, 5, and 11 to 13, Verse 23 and 24, also found in Mark. Take heed that no man deceives you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many, and, and because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall sow great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So what does Alan Kardec say about this? So he says that the gifts of revealing the future is generally attributed to the prophets so that the words prophecy and prediction have come, become synonyms. In the classic evangelical sense, the word prophet has a much wider significance. This name is given to all those sent by God with the mission to instruct mankind and to reveal both what is hidden and the mysteries of spiritual life. Therefore, a person may be a prophet without making any predictions. That was the idea as understood by the Jews at the time of Jesus. And this is why when they took him before the high priest, uh, Caiaphas, the scribes and wise men who were there spat upon him and hit him with their fists saying, Christ prophesies to us and tell us who hit you. Nevertheless, it has happened that there have been prophets who could see into the future, be it through intuition or providential revelations, so they could transmit these warnings to mankind. Due to the fact of these predictions having been fulfilled, the gift of predicting the future was considered to be one of the attributes of being a prophet. False Christ and prophets will raise themselves up and will do great prodigies and things which will astonish to the point of seducing, seducing even the chosen ones. These words give us the true meaning of the term prodigy. In theological interpretation, prodigies and miracles are exceptional phenomena outside the law of nature. These being the exclusive work of God, beyond all doubt, he can annul them if he so pleases. Nevertheless, simple good sense tells us that this is not possible, that he has given those who are perverse and inferior power equal to his own, nor even less the right to undo that which he himself has done. Jesus could never have sanctioned such a principle. If, however, according to the sense attributed to these words, the spirit of evil has the power to perform prodigies such as these, and that even those who are chosen would be deceived, then the result would, would be that by being able to do what God does, then prodigies and miracles would not be the exclusive privilege of God's messengers. Then this would prove nothing, because there would be no means of distinguishing the miracles of the saints from those of the devil. Therefore, it is necessary that we look for a more rational meaning to these words. To the, this is where we get to the meaning. Alan Kardec has, gets, 
puts in context the whole problem. So he's saying, no, you're not going to be fooled by someone performing miracles. I'll carry on with Alan Kardec. To the ignorant masses, all phenomena whose cause is unknown become supernatural, marvelous, and miraculous. Once the cause is found, it is recognized that the phenomenon, however extraordinary it appears, is nothing more than the application of one of the laws of nature. In this manner, the circle of supernatural facts becomes restricted as scientific knowledge widens. At all times, men and women have exploited certain knowledge they possess for the sake of ambition, self-interest, and their desire to dominate so as to gain the prestige of possessing supposedly superhuman powers or to lay claim to divine missions. These are the false Christ and false prophets. So I think he's, he's, a lot of, he's talking about these people who say they speak with spirits, although there are people around that I believe I actually do. And then they, you know, but these are the people who go to audiences and say, well, tell me about your, your dead mother. And then they, they fish for information and they kind of give, you know, very, you know, either they know some history or they try to fool the audience. That, I think that's what uh, Alan Kardec is talking about. So the diffusion of knowledge in these matters annihilates their credibility and will result in diminished numbers in proportion to the rate at which man enlightens himself. The simple fact of being able to perform what some like to call prodigies does not in any way constitute a sign of a divine mission, seeing that these phenomena may result from acquired knowledge, which is in the reach of anyone or from special organic faculties, which are either those who are, are worthy or ignoble are able to possess. True prophets are recognized by their serious character and total morality. So, so one of the things that with people who say they can talk to spirits is one of the look that, the way to look at them is how do they how do they you know how do they act? Are they moral? Or do they they you know try to make a decent living? They don't look, everyone's entitled to that, but do they try to go beyond that? Do they try and fool lots of people? So those are things you need to look at when you, you look at these people who say that they can, you know, speak to the other side. And that's why spiritism is so important to study because in spiritist center, they'll have mediums meetings and they'll help answer your questions in many places, at least in Brazil. The United States is, I don't know if they're, they're quite there. Some places are, a lot of places aren't yet but they'll never charge for that, right? They'll charge you for that of coming in there and telling you what someone communicated to you. But let's talk about why does, so, but the spirit world does send us prophets. Jesus Christ was the prophet. There's been other prophets in the Old Testament. There's been prophets since then. Chico Xavier was a prophet. He told us things that would happen in the future. So it's all there. So let's talk about this, because we all want to know the future. And if we had our way, we would get a display of the events that would occur to us every day and be secure in our knowledge of the oncoming possibilities, right? That's what we want. We really, we, we really want to see the future in relation to ourselves. That is what everybody's interested in. What is the future, but how does it mean to me? So, but let's say, let's say you did know the future. So think of this, what would happen on that screen? Let's say you had a computer screen and every day, and on that screen, it says, as you wake up in the morning, it says at 3 p.m., you'll die today. Your first act would be change all of your plans. Some may lie in bed waiting, others flee to the farthest ends of the earth. And as one of the people just wrote, it says, prophets never cease, yes. They've always been around us. So let's say you're told, right? You're going to die today at 3 o'clock. There's your prophecy. So whatever the case, your normal routine and trajectory would be altered, and the sequence of events that would have led to your death would have to change in order to come to the same conclusion, or it could result in a different end, which would have made the certainty of your destiny fallible. This is why we aren't allowed intimate knowledge of our future. With certainty, people would opt out of the difficult lesson. For example, if I was told the stock I was planning to buy wasn't going up by 100% like I hoped, but in fact would drop by 50%, I wouldn't buy it. But 
I would miss the hard experience of learning how to handle monetary loss with dignity that was assigned to me. Not walking into financial disaster would actually be worse than participating in it and deriving the valuable wisdom that I would attain, wisdom that would assist me in my quest to become a better spirit. So we have to remember when we're, when we're just very curious in, in about the future, especially for ourselves, why are we on earth? It isn't for us to know the future, it's to improve our character is really what our trial here on earth is all about. We are periodically sent to this rigorous campus, this planet of atonement, where we pay for our past wrongs and are educated in the process. If the spirit world told us the answers to the test before we started the class, we would learn nothing. So that's important to know. We would learn absolutely nothing. But like good teachers everywhere, the broad concepts and the consequences of not performing are presented up front. Desired end states are telegraphed as well as alerting which subjects and assignments are critical. Prophecies sent by the spirit world are no different. Some are meant to spur us on in search of the promised reward, while others are meant as a warning. Each one serves a distinct purpose, which may not be apparent at first. From the first utterings of medicine men or women in primitive tribes to various religious figures, the spirit realm has been in constant communication with the human race. Many messages may be difficult to analyze, but all will leave some little nugget of truth, either as a caution or a carrot to motivate us to work harder. More importantly, there is no rule that what is said must occur, right? It, it, sometimes it's said, maybe it's up to us to either stir ourselves to action or wait passively for the, in, for the outcome. Keep in, in mind, always, future events previously planned by the spirit world are malleable. While the overall target, such as moving the earth from a planet of atonement to a planet of regeneration, is set, the exact method to achieve it is dynamic. I'll give you a, uh, an example. The great Brazilian medium, Francisco Chico C. Xavier, was originally tasked with producing 50 books of spiritist literature written by communications from spirits. That number increased as the spirit world gauged the impact and reach of Chico's books. Chico was also told to lessen his workload in some areas to concentrate on psychographing books. Hence, as factors change, the plan is modified, just like in our world. And you read that in other books by uh, Henri Louise, where they had this woman last longer because they feared that her death would affect the pregnancy of her daughter. So the, there are always more factors. This, the, the, the future of the earth isn't set in stone in small little increments. It is in stone saying we're going to move from a planet of atonement to a planet of, of, of uh, regeneration. So it's like, you need to think of it as like an executive says, yes, we want this, this project done. And we want this done by, you know, 10 months from now. But how you do the project and what are the events within the project will all be done by the people on the ground, seeing what they're doing, getting feedback, analyzing their mistakes, analyzing things that happen, making new plans constantly or updating plans to get to your end state. It's the same with the spirit world. So when you hear modern prophecies, well, one of the good examples, Chico's prophecy of 50 years, right from 1969, 2019, if we didn't have nuclear war, well, we didn't. So we'll see what happens. And he said, aliens would come, the good things would happen. We shall see. He never said exactly when, but I, it would be interesting. So, but when you hear prophecies, regard those as possibilities, given the current trajectory of events at the present time. Heed the warning to take constructive action to alleviate what you may have done wrong in the past and in no circumstances violate your conscience, even if you think it is for the greater good. Don't worry about apocalyptic 
predictions. If you have led a good life, you will be fine as you pass over to the other side, no matter what the circumstances are when you died. So always remember this. If you're afraid of something, you're immortal. Leaving the earth is nothing more than packing your bags to go home. This is why we have to kind of ignore all the fear created by these news organizations about the current the current pandemic has been told to us and in fact i've had some videos on this by different spirits telling us look just take care of yourself follow good you know you know social distancing but it, you know if you are a spiritual person and you you have good faith your odds of succumbing to any type of illness are much lower Although there are some people who are going to be taken back to the spirit world because they want them to get ready to be incarnated again to help us get to a planet of regeneration. So whatever happens, have faith in the grand design for you. If you're destined to go back to this wonderful spirit world at this time, that's okay. That's why knowing and understanding spiritism, you are immortal. When you die, most hopefully everyone listening to this will go to a much better place. It's not a big deal. You'll st you'll still be you. You'll still know what's going on with your loved ones. Maybe you can even help them with the spirit world. That's why when you're on Earth, just worry about staying focused on improving your spiritual side and helping others. Anything that detracts from that goal is extra luggage and should be discarded. Therefore, don't listen to the hysterical panic you know, ramblings of our current culture. Okay, let's carry on with Alan Kardec says. Now he quotes from John chapter four, verse one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So what does he mean by this? He is saying, this is what he's writing about this verse. Far from sanctioning the false Christ and false prophets, as some people take pleasure in saying, spiritual phenomena comes, on the contrary, to deal them a death blow. Do not ask spiritism for prodigies or miracles, since it positively declares it does not perform them, in the same manner that physics, chemistry, astronomy, and geology reveal the laws of the material world, so spiritism reveals other unknown laws which govern the relationships existing between the physical and spiritual worlds. Laws was just as much as those of science or the laws of nature. By giving an explanation for certain types of phenomena, which until now has remained inexplicable, it destroys all that remains of the miraculous. Consequently, those who feel tempted to exploit these phenomena for personal gain by pretending to be messengers from God will not be allowed to abuse the, cred the credulity of the general public for long but will be quickly unmasked. Moreover, as already been said, these phenomena alone prove nothing. Every mission is proved by its moral effects, and these cannot be produced by everyone. One, one of the results of the development of the spirits of scientists is that through research into the causes of certain of these manifestations, many mysteries are explained. So, what he's saying is that Spiritism will mostly some and you know on these messages we had about the current pandemic and our current you know COVID nineteen is saying stay calm these things this is going to pass this this whole pandemic is not meant to revolutionize or destroy the economy of the world it will certainly have an effect but it's not going to completely you know change course it's meant to steer you in a course but. If he says there are still there are spiritists right who come, they'll give us messages. Spiritism does give us messages, and a lot of these people come here will be people from other planets, are more perfect spirits like Jesus Christ, Socrates, right? So who who are these spirits that do come to Earth to help our planet progress, like Jesus and Socrates and Confucius and Buddha? Why would they consent to live through pain and suffering to assist so many ungrateful souls? Well, Leon Denis, in his book, Life and Destiny, tells us who these selfless spirits are and the reason for their voluntary descent into our environment of pain and atonement. 
Leon recounts what these superior spirits withstood on their climb towards perfection. This is what he said. To construct an individuality through thousands of lives, accomplishing hundreds of worlds, get that, hundreds of worlds, under the direction of our older brothers and our friends in space, to climb the path to heaven, to the divine drama, one of the agents of God in the eternal work, to work for the universe as the universe works for us, behold the secret of destiny, so the soul mounts from sphere to sphere, from circle to circle, united to the beings it has loved. It goes on its pilgrimage seeking divine perfection. Arriving at the supreme region, it is free from the law of rebirth. These are very high spirits he's talking about. Reincarnation is no more an obligation for it, but an act of will and a work of sacrifice when it has a mission to accomplish. Reaching the supreme heights, the spirit says, I am free. I have broken forever the fetters which have chained me to material worlds. I have acquired science, energy, love. But that which I have acquired, I want to share with my brothers. And for that purpose, I will go and live amongst them. And I will offer them the best that is in me. I will take a body of flesh. I will ascend again among those who suffer in ignorance to console, enlighten, and aid. So Leon Denis is telling us in this very revealing paragraph that the thorny path to perfection is long and arduous. We who are here now are just beginning our education. Imagine what we will learn in the future, the span of humanity and the vast discoveries to be witnessed. Would we have the love to return to the abyss and help others? I would think that after we truly learn to rid ourselves of our ego, our desire for material possessions, that any one of us could someday be what Leon Denis says our highest spirits have lowered themselves to aid us. And he said, this is Lao Tse, Buddha, Socrates, and Christ. There's another example of spirits that have come to help the earth. And that is in the book, uh, Planetary Transition by Devaldo Franco. And they were talking about spirits that came from a more advanced planet than the Earth. And they would come to Earth and they would be teachers, doctors, politicians, scientists. And they would come and they would they would be part of our culture, part of our society. I mean, not the not probably not the big standouts, right? Like Buddha and Socrates and Lao Tse and of course Jesus. But more like the second tier, people who are who are Beacons of light or examples of how one should act. And these people came from advanced planets. Now, the person there was saying, well, you know, what's going to be the life plan for these? And he was told the life plan for these, not, I wouldn't say pure spirits, but higher spirits than, than ours, more mature, probably a better word, is their life plan is going to be absent things like, you know, very bad illnesses. They'll have colds and flus, etc. But they won't have tragic accidents. They won't have, you know, very bad illnesses. They won't have tragedies in their life like a lot of us have, because we have to go through that and for our trials. So we have many spirits come here to help us. So then I'll go on with what Alan Kardec says. So only those who prefer darkness rather than light have every interest in combating this progress. But the truth is like the sun, which dissipates even the most dense clouds. So he's telling us, he also says, Spiritism reveals another far more dangerous aspect of false Christ and false prophets, which is to be found not amongst men, but amongst the discarnate. These are the deceiving, hypocritical prideful and falsely wise spirits who are passing from earth into the spiritual wanderings have adopted venerated names and masks under which to hide in order to facilitate the acceptance of the most strange and absurd ideas. And you see that they'll come. And this is why medium is meaning. This is why spiritism is very disciplined when talking to uh, spirits. They don't have, you know, they don't believe in having one person talk to one spirit this is why they study all you know books especially uh, you know the the medium you know the medium's guide of by ellen kardec you know other books in the realms of mediumship 
etc. And they read from the Spirit's book because what do they try to do? They try and make sure that they have plenty of mediums around the table, like four or six mediums, and they they hold their meetings in spirits' centers, which are going to be protected by the spirits who are part of those helping that spirit to center. So only the spirits that the higher spirits want to let in will come and be in that medium's meeting. So it's very controlled. And if they get someone who tries to be, you know, wise, because they're very smart people out there, the discarnates who are still on the lower zone and below that, but eventually they will reveal themselves. And as Alan Kardec says, some of them presented themselves as Christ, the Virgin Mary, even God himself. And John warns against these spirits by saying, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So spiritism really gives us the means of trying them when it shows us the characteristics by which we may recognize the good spirits, which are always moral, never material. It is particularly to the manner by which the good may be distinguished from the bad that these words of Jesus may be applied. It is by the fruits you know the quality of the tree. A bad tree cannot produce good fruits. So spirits are judged by the quality of the works, just as a tree is judged by its fruits. So that's very important. And that's why I understand a lot of people who are, you know, very religious, and then we talk about spiritism, and they say, well, you can't talk to spirits. And I understand saying you should not do that because it is something that you should not just do without training and without understanding what you're getting into, without reading the medium's book, etc. by Alan Kardec. But as Alan Kardec said, we're, we're approaching this new era where more and more lay people, not religious priests, right, not the head of a temple or whatever, it, it, that hasn't worked for the earth. And now it's more normal people are going to do more and more communication with the spirit world. And that's why, you know, spiritism is helping create and train mediums so we can do that. So now he goes in the section, instruction from the spirits, the pro fault prophets. Now, quote, where it is said, Christ is here, do not go. On the contrary, be on guard, because the false prophets will be numerous. Do you not see that the leaves of the fig tree are fading? Do you not see that its multiple shoots are awaiting the time of coming the flower? Okay, let me, this is by a, uh, this, I can tell by the language. This is from the medium's book, okay. Nothing that is pure can come from something bad. My brethren, then this is how you should judge. It is the work you should examine. If those who say they're invested with the divine powers reveal signs of a mission of high order, that is to say, if they possess the highest order of Christian and eternal virtues, which are charity, love, tolerance, and goodness, which conciliates all hearts, and if in support of their works, they also present the equivalent acts, then you may say, these are the true messengers of God. Nevertheless, be mistrustful of honeyed words, be mistrustful of the scribes and Pharisees who pray in public places, clothed in long tunics. Mistrust those who lay claim to a monopoly of the truth. No, no, Christ is amongst these, seeing that those he sent to propagate his sacred doctrine and regenerate his people's will, above all else, follow his example, be gentle and humble of heart. Those who have to save humanity, which is running towards damnation by their examples and by their counseling, will be essentially modest and humble. Run away from all who show even an atom of pride as you would run away from an infectious disease, which is apt to contaminate everything it touches. Remember, each creature bears a stamp of their brow and even more especially in their actions of their spiritual progress of are their inferiority. So, that is from uh, Louis in Bordeaux in 1861. And we have seen this all the time. We have seen, you know, I don't want to say too many things, but you'll see 
you know, the people like Chico Xavier are very humble. He, he lived very simply, you know, he, he gave most of his, his income from his books. He gave it away. He created a, a trust organization. Devaldo Franco has a, a good trust organization. I've seen him. He certainly doesn't live the high life. He, you know, he lives okay. You know, he doesn't live poor. I think Chico lived the most humble I've ever seen. I haven't been to his house yet. I want to do that. It's one of the things I'd like to do. But, but then you see these, these people who are televangelists. You know, some of them are really great people. A lot of them are really great people. But, you know, I've heard of these some people that get on there and say, hey, I, I need this private jet, right? So if someone needs a private jet, that's someone who's not a prophet of God, most probably. So that's why you look at the morality Look how they report themselves. And, you know, if they're humble and nice, which I've seen, you know, which I hear from Chico and I've seen Duvall, though, who is very nice, um, that's what you want to look for. Okay. So let me carry on with what Alan Kardec said. Mistrust the false prophets. So this... This is what he says. This recommendation is useful in all epochs, but above all in times of transition, such as now when the transformation of humanity is occurring. So he wrote that in the 1850s. I think we're in the same, we're in the, it, it can be true today. And we think, well, that's, you know, 150 years ago. Well, transformation, 150 years. Think of 150 years as nothing to the spirit world. Nothing. I'll carry on. Because of a multitude of those who are ambitious and scheming will promote themselves as reformers and messiahs. We should be on guard against these imposters, and it is the duty of all honest people to unmask them. You may well ask how they can be identified. Here are the things which point them out. The command of an army is only confided to a capable general. Do you believe that God is less prudent than man? You may be sure that he only confides important missions to those he knows are capable of fulfilling them, seeing that great missions are heavy burdens, which crush those who are lacking in strength, to carry them. In all things, the teacher must know more than the disciple. In order to lead humanity to advance, both morally and intellectually, we must have men and women of superior intelligence and morality. This is why spirits who are already advanced, having passed their tests in other existences, are always chosen for these missions because if they were not superior to the ambient in which they are required to act, their effect would be nullified. Having said that, we must conclude that the true missionary of God must justify his mission through superiority, virtue, magnanimity, results, and by the moralizing influence of his work. We may also take into consideration yet another consequence. If due to their character, virtues, and intelligence, they show themselves to be less than the part they purport to represent, or the person under whose name they have placed themselves, then they are nothing more than storytellers of low character who cannot even imitate their chosen model. Another consideration is that, in the greater part, true missionaries of God are ignorant of the fact. They fulfill the mission to which they were called by the strength of character they possess, seconded by occult forces who inspire and direct them, even against their will, but without premeditation. In a word, the true prophet reveals himself by his actions and is discovered by others, whereas the false prophet declares himself to be a messenger of God. The first is humble and modest, the second is full of himself, speaks with arrogance, and, and as all who lie, appears to be always afraid, he will not be believed. Some of the impostors have passed themselves as apostles of Christ, others as Christ himself, and to the, great, to the disgrace of all humanity, they have encountered those sufficiently credulous as to believe in their baseness. However, a simple pondering is enough to open the eyes of even the most blind in this matter. That is to say that if Christ were to reincarnate on earth, he would come with all his power and all his virtues, unless one admits that he had degenerated, which would be absurd. Well, in the same manner, 
if we were to take away even one of God's attributes, we would no longer have a God. So likewise, if we take one of Christ's virtues, we would no longer have Christ. So the question is, do those who purport to be Christ have all his virtues? Observe them, scrutinize their ideas and actions, and you will recognize that apart from anything else. They lack the distinctive qualities of Christ, which are charity and humility, while abounding all in those Christ does not possess as of covetousness and pride. Furthermore, take note that at this moment in various countries, there are many supposed Christ, just as there are many Elijah's, St. John's, or St. Peter's, and it is clearly impossible for all of them to be true. So, I think that is probably as good a discussion as we can do today to give justice to that. So we have been told by, you know, by Alan Kardec and by spirits that Alan Kardec put into the chapter, there will be false prophets and false Christ, is to watch out for that and to understand that those who do come to earth are full, are, uh, are humble, and they're not looking for material goods, and they're not going to say, I am your messenger. No, they will be, they will be discovered by the message that they give. People will come to them. They don't need to advertise themselves. So I hope this is some good advice. And please, if you're interested in the spirit world and you're interested in more of the world around us and how, you know, what the spirit world has in store for us, please read my book, How We Are Guided by Spirits. This is book three. Book one is Heaven and Below. Book two is Spirits in the Spirit Universe. And book three is really getting information that was given by spirits to the Reverend G. Val Owen of how we are and countries are guided by spirits and then what is the future of earth because i believe the more you can study and understand spiritism the more then you can make your own decision what steps you are going to make to become a better person so you too can rise in heaven someday come back to earth and help this planet move to the next level anyway i want to say god bless to everybody God bless.